You're about to discover everything you need to know about Paul Gauguin Cruises, what's good, who it's really for, and some important watchouts. Hi, I'm Gary Bembridge, and this is another of my tips for travelers. I'm currently, as I record this, on board the Paul Gauguin. I want to share with you everything that I've learned about Paul Gauguin that you need to know. Paul Gauguin is a small ship luxury cruise line. It's a one ship cruise line, and they cruise around the French Polynesian islands. They really focus on seven to 14 day round trips out of Papetti. So what do Paul Gauguin do that's unique, different, or better? In my view, there are five things that they do incredibly well. First of all, small ship luxury cruising. The ship only has 332 guests, 217 crew, so very high crew to passenger ratio. They have quite a wide range of cabins, which range from very large owner suites down to porthole cabins. I was actually cruising in the most common on board, which is the balcony cabin. And because it's so beautiful, it's great to have a balcony if you're cruising through French Polynesia. The ship has quite a lot of choice. So there are three dining venues on board, all of which are included within the fare. So the main dining room is called L'Etoile. They also have the veranda, which is a buffet for breakfast and lunch, and the evening turns into a sort of a market French restaurant. And they have Le Grill, which is up on deck. And again, it's a buffet, breakfast and lunch. And in the evening, it becomes a specialty dining venue. The ship also has the kind of usual things that you would expect, despite being a small ship. So it has a theater, it has a small casino, a couple of bars on board, pool deck, it has a spa, it has a fitness center. The ship also has a water sports platform, which opens at the rear of the ship. So it's obviously a small ship, but it's a pretty luxurious ship. It's fitted out in a very luxurious way and the service and attention to detail and the quality of the food is very high. The company has been operating for over 25 years within French Polynesia. So their understanding and their relationship with all of the islands and the people is very, very strong. So they really know and understand the islands and have incredible connections. The Paul Gauguin itself has been designed to cruise around the French Polynesian islands. So not only is it small, but also it has a very shallow draft. And that's very important because it can call on a lot of the islands that other ships can't get to. On board, they have what is known as the Les Gargans. These are billed as Tahitian ambassadors and also Polynesian entertainers. They then provide much of the entertainment and also many of the activities are run by the Les Gargans. They will do dances, they will do singing, provide demonstrations on how to make local crafts. So the Les Gargans are a key part of the whole Polynesian experience that is created on board the ship. There's also an enrichment lecturer on board who will give talks about the region. And they have a big Polynesian night normally held in Morea, where they bring on board local entertainers. They have a Polynesian buffet, Polynesian food. So I think one of the key things they do is bring alive the whole connection and the whole Polynesian experience. The third thing which I think is really good is the fares are largely all inclusive. Pretty much everything's included. So all of course your accommodations included, all your dinings including, including eating at the specialty dining restaurants, all your gratuities are included, your drinks are included. So wine, beer, spirits, soft drinks. Use of the water sports platform, that's included. They also provide your snorkeling equipment. Also time at their private beach in Bora Bora and also access and the day on their private island, Moto Mahana, and of course all the entertainment and the onboard enrichment activities. So what's not included? Well, excursions are not included. Wi-Fi is not included and you can buy various packages of Wi-Fi. So for example, on the cruise that I was on, it's around about $29 a day for unlimited Wi-Fi. And the Wi-Fi was actually pretty good. Another thing which I think is something they do incredibly well is some of the access to their private facilities. So they have a little private island called Motu Mahana, which is in the island of Faha. And this is a beautiful day out where you head across, the whole ship heads across, they learn entertainment, you have water sports, they have a fantastic and huge barbecue. And also in Bora Bora, they have a private beach so they will shuttle people to and from the beach. I think that's a phenomenal thing, some of their private facilities. These are really top notch, they're absolutely beautiful, and they're of course included within the fair. Another thing that I thought was a phenomenal thing they did were the excursions. There was an enormous range of excursions, particularly considering it's quite a small ship and just over 300 passengers. So they had scuba diving, snorkeling in every port, wave runner activities in every port. You had catamarans, 
simple, gentle sighting, glass bottom boats, days out at very premium, prestigious resorts, which was one of my big favorites. You'd have access to the beach, the pool, you'd have lunch included. They then had much more active excursions, so they had things like ATVs and 4x4 drives and some cultural and archaeological activities as well. Then on top of that, you could also then go on helicopter rides, float plane rides and get a view over the islands. So an enormous range of excursions were offered and that I thought was a big plus, especially as I said, because it's a small ship with not that many passengers. So who do I think that Paul Gauguin is most suited for? Most of the passengers are in their 50s and 60s and pretty active. It's a pretty active cruise. For a start, all of the stops are tender stops, so you have to be nimble enough to be able to climb in and out of the tenders. A couple of places there were like on the private beach there was a wet landing so you had to be active and able enough to get off the tenders into the water. Most of the excursions are pretty active. There's snorkeling, ATV drives, there's wave runners, there's cycling. So it's a pretty active experience. You'll find that the passengers tend to be sort of 50s and 60s but they are very active. Now of course it is a luxury line so it's relatively expensive so that does by definition attract the people who are able to have the time and the money to do that because French Polynesia is quite a long way to get to. From Europe it's about 21 hours, even from LA it's 8 hours. There were of course some younger people on board because of course French Polynesia coming on a luxury cruise is also very attractive for honeymooners or people celebrating some significant birthdays or events. In terms of the mix of people, quite an interesting mix. It's predominantly American, lots of Canadians, but there was a good representation of people from Asia because things like Air Tahiti, Nui, it flies in from Japan. Quite a lot of French because of course the strong French connection with French Polynesia. And of course with all cruises, wherever you go, you'll always find lots of Australians and New Zealanders who love cruising. The language on board is primarily English, but all of the announcements will be done both in English and French. The menus will be in English and French. The daily program you can get in either English or French. So it definitely is bilingual, but it is predominantly English on board. So what about solo travelers and what about families? There were a couple of solo travelers on board the cruise that I was on, but it can be a relatively expensive way to cruise. What's very important is you need to work with your agent or with Paul Gauguin if you are a solo traveler and want to come on the cruises because they do do various offers and deals at various times of the year. But you can end up paying, particularly in the premium cabins and the suites, the price of two people even if there are only one of you. So very importantly, so work with your cruise agent or work with Paul Gauguin and find out which of the cruises they're offering different discounts and offers with better prices for solo travelers. So what about families? Now Paul Gauguin can be a pretty attractive option if you're thinking of coming to the region with a family for a couple of reasons. They are introducing, certainly during the key summer school holidays and the more significant holidays, sort of Christmas time, they're offering a lot of opportunities and incentives for families to come on board. So what are the deals for families? If your child is aged 17 years old or under, they sail free if they're in the same cabin as you. Of course then you have the various taxes and the flights to get there. Also what they have introduced is a new program which is called the Mona Explorer program. They run a program for kids on board aged between 7 and 15 and lots of activities really related to the marine life, ocean conservation, so it's really educational but fun at the same time and those are run on selected cruises. So if you're planning to travel on board Gauguin with your family, very importantly check with Paul Gauguin and your agent that your cruise has those offers, but also importantly check if they do have the Mona Explorer program on board because that's going to make your child's life on board really fantastic. Now the dress code on board is relatively relaxed and informal and it's what's sort of called country casual, smart casual. So in the evenings you're asked to dress up a little bit, so you're asked to wear a collared shirt, ideally no jeans, so more slacks if you're a gent, and the equivalent for ladies, so you know, no, no torn jeans, no shorts. So if you're one of those people that want to get dressed up, you can, and if you're one of those people who like to cruise in a relatively informal or relaxed way, you'll certainly find that on board Paul Gauguin. Now people did dress relatively smartly but not overly so. The key thing is collared shirts and slacks is the most that you need to worry about. The key strength of Paul Gauguin is that it's a small ship, it's luxurious, and they are absolute experts in French Polynesia. I have loads of videos of tips about all the regions 
of the world, including more about French Polynesia. So why don't you watch one of those right now?